Welcome to the R video tutorial on multiple linear regression and R categorical variables. This is like the fourth one in the series here where we've been playing with categorical variables. In the previous video, you should have looked at how they deal with multiple categories, because here we're going to use this data set, this real estate data set again, that we used two videos ago to look at how categorical variables influence our regression. All right, so we're going to read in the data. If you remember from two videos ago, we had to add in a separator slash backslash T because it really wasn't CSV. It was actually a tab delimited file, and we needed to get that uh, fixed to get it in the data or read in the data. All right, so we've read it in. Notice we have Richmond, Toronto, San Diego, Toronto, Richmond, Cincinnati. We have houses and condos, and we have here the value and the insurance rate to insure the house for a year. And this is the plot from last time. I'm just trying to get, keep you uh, abreast of what we've been doing. There is a relationship, but this was insurance to value, and you can see there's multiple groupings here. Uh, one grouping is for probably each city. So this would be a city, this would be a city, there's another city down here, another city down here. And what we want to do is simultaneously fit a regression to this. Now, R is going to create everything for us, okay? So in terms of the indicator variables, which I mentioned in the last video, so you should go back and look at that. But we need to know how to discern out of the output what's going to be there. All right, so what we're going to do is fit the regression model. So fit the regression model. We're going to use the LM function again. I'm going to call this mod one again. Uh, I probably shouldn't just for consistency, but look, anyway, uh, use the LM function. We had here value, uh, actually insurance was the response and the tilde symbol. And then we had value. And plus, I'm going to just put city here right now, and then uh, the data is RE1. So summary, mod one, and we'll see how well this works. So run this. Notice we have a R squared of 0.9748, which is pretty good. But notice how it grouped itself here. Um, so we have City, Richmond, City, San Diego, City, Toronto. Which one's missing? Cincinnati. This is why I said it pays to take uh, the need to pay attention to exactly what's going on here because it defaults to actually the order that it's alphabetical. So City, Richmond, this is the influence of Richmond. It says it's just $2 less. Uh, it's not statistically significant. We have city San Diego. It's not statistically significant. Uh, and it's about a dollar less uh, in the intercept. So this is the inference on the intercepts, not the inference on the slopes. So just keep that in mind as we're going through this. Uh, we haven't added the interactions yet. Uh, so here there really doesn't seem to be a whole lot of difference in the shift in these uh, insurance rates. So what we can do is we can actually add in all of the interactions. And I'll, I'll show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this. We are going to put in interactions. And in R, you can get them to put them all in at once if uh, really easily if you just do this. Value, or you could do value star city if you want. But if you put it in the colon, it'll work as well. And let's give this a go. See what happens. We'll call this mod 2. And bingo. So what happens? We get all of these in here. Okay, so we now have the effect of the city and we have the effect of the city uh, on the value. So the value, the city, everything. And notice here, nothing is significant. And the reason nothing is significant is we have a problem here called multicollinearity. Uh, these things are too related to each other. So notice some things will be significant and then they'll go out of significance, even though they should matter. So uh, notice none of these are statistically significant if we do it this way. By just looking at city, none of them were significant. We're going to run a third model here and see what happens with it. Okay, so... What if we just left the interactions in and took out all the other bits? 
Okay, this is another way to look at things, see what happens. This is just gonna add shifts to the intercept, okay? So now everything's significant. So there's a bunch of ways to look at this. Uh, the value by city is significant. The value by Richmond is significant. And notice all the values are, are about the same. So that really is telling you the values or the rates uh, is not really dependent on the city that's going on. It, it is dependent on the value of the house, obviously. Uh, so just keep that in mind. There's different ways to run these models and you'll get different answers depending on which terms are in it. Now, this one actually included Toronto, which is interesting. Whereas if we scroll up to the last one, uh, notice Cincinnati is no longer in there, but in this last one, Cincinnati is here. So just be aware of how R is referring back to the ones that you're interested in. Okay, so keep that in mind as you go through and run these is that it's going to leave one out and that's why I made such a big deal about it in the previous video. All right, so this is enough for this video. Let's move on to the next one.